welcome back to another episode of Hidden Gems, where we talk about product use cases with the Covalent API. My name is Leilani, and today we're going to talk about how NFT marketplaces use Covalent. So we're going to go through NFTX and Binance's NFT marketplace. Both of them use the Covalent API, and we're going to map uh, parts of their website to the API reference so you can see which endpoints are used where. Okay, so if you want to follow along with this, you can sign up for an API key or log in with your API credentials and go to Covalent's API reference. You can get to this from our documentation page. The API reference is in the top right corner right here. And this way you can see all of the endpoints. Today we're going to be mostly looking at this NFT section because we're going through NFT marketplaces. I'm also going to have Etherscan open in another tab, which I can use to get contract addresses that I'll put into the API. And then, of course, I have NFTX's website, and I also have Binance's Marketplace. So now that we're on the homepage of Binance's NFT Marketplace, you can see this is where people can buy and sell NFTs and also stake and loan. I guess there's a few other functionalities. What we typically see is the trending in the top collections. This is good for us because Covalent actually caches all of this data to make it really easy for developers to fetch. Some other APIs, or like we did previously, rely on upstream servers, which means that sometimes you can have corrupt files or missing files, and you just don't really control where the images are stored. But now we cache all of the top collections like these on Ethereum, Polygon, BSC, and now we're starting on Arbitrum and Optimism as well. So you can monitor that on our docs. There's a data coverage page which will tell you how much is cached. But I'm just going to click into one that I recognize. So I'm going to click on Azuki. And it's going to take me to this page that basically has this grid of NFT cards that have the asset, the um, token ID, and the listing price we won't be able to fetch because this is actually not on chain. This is just stored on this marketplace. So until there's a sale that's actually recorded on the blockchain, we won't have that data because we only do on-chain data. We're going to go to the API reference and the endpoint that we're looking for in this case is get NFTs from contract with metadata because we are trying to get the NFTs from a certain contract or collection with metadata. So it's kind of like self-descriptive. Okay, so in this endpoint, it's going to return a list of NFT token IDs with all of the metadata like the images that we're going to see and also the attributes and traits, which is useful, which we'll get into. And you can see the path parameters are the chain name, which you can select on this sidebar here. Pretty much everything we're doing is going to be on Ethereum, which is the default, so I'm just going to leave it. And then the contract address, so I could probably get it from this, but I always find it's just easier to like search it on either scan if it comes up. Yeah, okay. And it's verified. Okay, so now I'm just going to copy the contract address for Azuki's. I'm going to paste it in here. And then there's a couple query parameters which we can go through now. So this no metadata basically omits all of the image assets and the traits and the attributes, and it just gives you a list of the token IDs. The reason you might want to do this is because if you are loading a big page, see how there's only a certain number of results, but I scroll to the bottom and then it loads more. This is because it's going to be really hard and heavy to load. Like this has 10,000 total NFTs. So if you were to like load them all at once, or even 50, which is what the default, I think, of this endpoint returns, you might rather prefer to just get a list of the token IDs and then individually query the metadata for each NFT, just depending on how many are displaying on the page and if you want to make it even faster. So let's ignore that for now because we're just going to get the first 50. Page size, so yeah, as I mentioned, I think there's 50 items per page, which is what it's going to default to. I could change this if I wanted, and I can also paginate through the response. So if I want to get 10,000 items, then basically each time I'm waiting for this to load, that's another API call. Okay, now here's a traits filter and a values filter. I want to get into this right after, so let's just ignore that for now and we'll click run. And when I click run, I'm going to see the response on the side. So here we go. I have my 50 items. I can also click this pagination toggle and I can see has more equals true, which means there's more NFTs in this collection. The total count of NFTs collection is NFTs in this collection is 10,000. So if I open up items here, 
these are each of the NFTs. So you can see contract name, Azuki, the address, the type is an NFT. The token ID is zero, so I'm starting at the very beginning and I have the URL. And then all of the metadata in this external data is gonna give me like the description. Here's the different size images that I can render and attributes as well. So this is super cool. Now let's get into the attributes. There's trait types like hair or clothing. Maybe some of them don't have hair, I don't know. Most of the time, everything has the same trait types, but the values of those traits are different. So let's go back to Azuki's Binance Marketplace. So, like, I don't know if this would count as hair because technically they have hair, but this is kind of like a hood, you know? So, anyway, you can see the different values of the attributes. Like, if the trait was background, then the value might be red or gray or any of these things. Let's say I actually wanted to filter now. On this sidebar here, I can see all of these different traits, like eyes, face, hair, mouth. So, let's go to eyes. And one thing people often look for on NFT marketplaces is things that are like more rare. So as you can see on the side here, they're showing the number of NFTs that have this value of that trait. And if you scroll down, there's some that are a little more rare. So let's go to lightning. And I think it's only showing me three because there's three listed, I guess. But there's actually 46 NFTs that have that value. So now I'm going to actually go back and I'm going to use this traits filter and the values filter. So for the traits, what was it, eyes? I think it was eyes. Values filter, lightning, okay. And then one other note, because I'm probably not gonna go back to this, this with uncached query parameter basically means that for any of these other chains where we don't cache the metadata, because as I mentioned, we only do that for the top chains right now, you can still fetch the NFTs, but you will be relying on the upstream servers. So it's just not going to be quite as reliable on smaller marketplaces. But we will do that based on demand. So if a lot of people ask for a certain chain, then we'll begin caching the assets on that chain too. So now I'm going to click run with my new filters. And did I spell anything wrong? Why is it not working? Oh, okay. I did need to capitalize it. That was silly. Um, so yeah, I can see 46 items have this value for that trait. And I think that's exactly, yeah, 46 is on the Binance Marketplace too. It's always good to just like double check because a lot of different data providers and um, applications will have slight differences and they might just calculate something differently. Blockchain data is pretty messy under the hood. So even with like the best case scenario, you might still find some inconsistencies occasionally. And now it's just gonna show me all of the Azukis that have this trait and that value. So if I go to attributes, there we go, eyes lightning. Cool. So this is all the same endpoint now that we've used to basically build this card display and to filter through all of the traits. <laughs> okay. While we're here, we're gonna spend a little bit more time on this sidebar. So if I actually want to like display all of these different traits and then all of the values for those. It's a different endpoint that we're gonna use, which is go to NFTs, core rendering. I could do trait summary for collection. So this one's cool because rather than returning the metadata of the NFTs, it's just gonna describe all of the possible traits and all of the possible values of the traits. So I can build something like that filter sidebar. And it's also gonna return the trait percentage field, which is actually like a percentage rarity because it's how many, it's the percent of NFTs in the collection that have that trait. So it's sort of like a rarity calculator that you could add where people are like looking for a very low percentage. So I just put the same contract address in there and I'm gonna click run. And it's gonna give me 12 items. So human, blue, red, and spirit. And then there's hair and the hair has a bunch of different, a bunch of different like water hair, pink hair band, pink flowy. I guess this is not the point of this video is to like discover all of the different Azuki hair types, but okay, yeah, there's a lot of different hair types. <laughs> but as you can see, it's basically just giving me this. So 
background, clothing, ear, eyes, face, hair. So all of these different things and the values. And if I go back, I'm just going to try to find that trait percentage field. Let me just go to like, here we go. Hair. So 9,992 of the 10,000 NFTs have hair, unsurprisingly. But the trait percentage of that is like 99%, basically 100%, but 99% of them have this. So if I open up another one, like mouth, well, they're all going to have a mouth. Here we go. Okay, so not all of them have ears. <laughs> so the trait percentage of this is like 18%. So yeah, that's a little more rare. Anyway, that is how we would build this bar here. Then there's a couple other things on this page that we could look at. So let's, what about owners? Okay, this is great. I want to see how many people actually own the Azuki NFTs. We already found this as well, the total items. As I mentioned, listed we can't find because that's off-chain, but total items we found when we initially got the NFT token IDs at the pagination at the bottom, it said total count was 10,000. But now let's do owners. So this is another endpoint, and it's actually in the balances section. We're going to go to get token holders as of any block height, and this works for both ERC-20s and NFTs, which is we're doing an NFT collection. Same contract address for Azuki's token address we're going to put in here. It's still on Ethereum. This is going to default to 100 items per page. You can paginate through after that if you want to get all the actual wallet addresses of the owners of Azuki's, and it's going to tell you how much they each have. Oh, and then the block height, duh. So this is useful because I can specify a block height, which corresponds to a date and time. So if I wanted to only look at the total count of holders like last year and then compare it to this year, I would find the block height from a date last year and I would put it in here. And people also do this for airdrops, like if there's a cutoff date where they want to examine how many people were like holders or active in their community, they would put the block height in here. But I just want to know right now and it's going to default to the latest one. I think you can also type latest, but we don't need to do that. So. Now I'm going to just click run and it's going to give me the first hundred items. As I mentioned, this you could paginate through. It's going to tell me like the total count at the bottom here. So that's what I wanted to know is how many total count of holders there are right now. And it says 4,378. And in the items, it's going to tell me the actual wallet address and how many they hold for each of the holders. So that's kind of cool if you actually do want to. Let's see if I can click on that. No, I don't think I can click on that. In some cases, like I think maybe on OpenSea or Etherscan does this, you can see like a distribution of token holders. So that could be a cool feature to show like how much it's concentrated, how many wallet addresses hold X percentage, which you could also do using that endpoint. So this is going to be off chain. We're not going to cover this. Trades and floor price, mm, you could basically, for that, to see all the trades, you would find the log event that corresponds to like a trade or sale, and you would go in the base endpoints, and you could get log events by topic hash, and then you could basically look for that topic hash that represents the sale of those NFTs, you could look for a range and see how many sales there are, and you could calculate volume that way. But for now, we're just going to move on, I think. Let's go to the NFTX marketplace. All right, so on the front page, there's the same building blocks. So a lot of these marketplaces where you can buy and sell will show you like new collections or top collections. This one actually has something trending, which is kind of cool based on seven day turnover. So let's just click into one of these. Okay, we're all going to die, <laughs> it's trending. So yeah, this card display is gonna be built the same way. This is like what we went through with NFTs from contract with metadata. And this is the same type of like little filter bar that we saw before too. So we know how to do that. Let's click on an info for an NFT. So this is great. This is actually, you could still get this from the same display or you could query like an individual token ID 
and get the metadata for like a single NFT, which if you wanted to do that, it's in get single NFT with metadata from contract and you can see there's a cached version and a not cached version. So we would probably do this if it is a trending and top collection. And that would just return all of this metadata. So you have the image, you have the ID, and then you have the different traits and the value of those traits. So yeah, what happens if I click on it? Oh, it just takes me to OpenSea. Okay, let's go to activity. Okay, cool. So this shows me all of the recent swap sales, just like just activity basically on the NFTX marketplace. So there's a couple different ways that I could show this. Okay, I'm gonna see a link here. I'm gonna click on one of these and I'm doing this so it's taking me to Etherscan so I can see the transaction but I actually just wanna get this contract address for the NFTX marketplace. So I'm gonna copy that. And then I can actually use a transactions endpoint here. So in our transactions endpoints, I'm gonna to go to get recent transactions for address. There's a bunch of different things you can do here. I'm not gonna to go too in depth because it's an NFT video, but if I wanted to, this is commonly used for wallets to just get a snapshot of the recent activity, which is kind of similar to this, but instead of a wallet, we're looking at a contract address. So even though it says wallet address, you can actually put the contract right in here of the marketplace. On Ethereum, quote currency is gonna default to USD, so it's just gonna show me like the native token quoted in USD. I could omit log events, but I don't wanna do that because I want to know what's going on, which I can see in the log events. And then I'm gonna click run. Okay, so this is giving me like the most recent 63 transactions for the NFT marketplace, for NFTX marketplace. And it also gives me these links so that I know what the previous page is if I wanted to paginate through more response from here. But I'm just gonna click on the items. And now I can see a from, a to, a transaction hash for $26 USD. So let me go to the log events. I also have gas metadata. Let me just see what happened here. Okay, this is a lot of log events. <laughs> so this might be kind of like a complicated transaction. Okay, there's an approval. And a transfer. And a transfer. So this might be a swap because swaps have a lot of different log events. So let me actually go to this transaction hash at the top so I can see what's going on. And I'm just gonna put this one into um, Etherscan. Well, yeah, as I can see on Etherscan, yeah, it has 22 logs, so this is a complicated transaction. I could omit the log events and I could just get like the basic from and to and what happened, but it's useful for like context to have all the information, so this is a bunch, and this is, I guess, a trend with a lot of NFT marketplaces now because you're able to do, like, multiple sales at once or stake NFTs or, like, buy three NFTs at once. You can do that on OpenSea, and a bunch of other NFT marketplaces, I guess, are doing that too. So technically, this is actually... There's a swap and then a transfer of two of these NFTs. So that makes sense why there's, like, a lot going on. But yeah, you can get all of the associated data using that recent transactions endpoint here. So basically they'll just link to Etherscan. That's pretty easy to build into your application too because the Etherscan links are just like the same base link slash the transaction hash. So yeah, cool. So I could basically build this with recent transactions. If I wanted to get more transactions through that marketplace, I would just go to the paginated transactions endpoint. And then I would just start at whatever page in time, like zero or the most recent one, which I think if I went back, it was like 79 was the previous page. So I think I was on page 80. And you can also get a transaction summary for address, which maybe let's just try that. So let me see. Basically there's been 8,000 total transactions on this marketplace. 
The latest one is, let me see, that's the same one we were just looking at. So there hasn't been one since. There's a detailed link so I can see the, like a more granular version of that. Then I can see the earliest transaction too, which was, looks like January 10th, 2023 this year. Maybe they updated the marketplace contract too, if they've been around longer than that, because I think they have. So on this version of the contract. And then I have a detailed link for that as well. So that's a good place to, I could go to this and then I could start paginating from that earliest link. Just makes it a lot easier. So yeah, now we've covered how to build the card displays, the like individual NFT data, how to get all of the different metadata, how to build that filtering bar, how to build recent transactions. So that's a bit about how NFT marketplaces use Covalent. <laughs> Let's just go to a couple resources real quick, and I'll also link these down below for if you want to explore more for like how to build with NFT data using Covalent. So I can get here from the API reference, which we were just on. If you click on Unified API, there's actually a guide section here, which is a little bit hidden, but there's a lot of good stuff in here. So if you open it up, you can click on any of these guides. There's like 30 of them and, or I could just go to the overview. The overview categorizes them into balances, transactions, and NFTs. So you can see there's a handful of NFT guides as well. This one's gonna teach you how to do more stuff with rarity. This will show you how to get all the transfers for an NFT, how to verify NFT ownership in a collection, how to display all of the NFTs that a wallet address is holding and how to block spam NFTs with the API as well. So yeah, those are some more good resources to check out if you're interested in building with NFT data. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more product use cases. I think we're gonna do a walkthrough of how wallets use Covalent next and we have a couple other fun ones coming up. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, bye.